We do have two interesting people on right now. And number two is back with us. Sasha is back with us, you guys. His uh, YouTube special, Artificial Ignorance, is available on Amazon, Spotify, and iTunes, and wherever other fine fucking products are sold. We love him, so he is back with us. There he is. How are you, brother? Hey guys. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good. You are with Mike Figs. He had told us, because I'd switched times with you guys, he told us he was coming to the studio. But then apparently he is also off the wagon, slept in, and here we are. Oh, Sorry, good. Sasha. My bad, pal. No problem. No uh, problem. You don't man. care. I'm here. I just yeah, love I'm... looking at these two very well-kept men. <laughs> In their nice homes with their, no, seriously, with their both beautiful your sectionals <laughs> and interior design. We've learned. We've learned to just keep this very narrow part of our apartment. Uh, yeah, all the yeah. junk is yeah. over there, got off it. camera. Yeah, I got to figure out how to do that because whenever I do on the odd chance like a Zoom or a Skype thing, all people see are my old toys from the 80s. And it's in the just toilet, no Bill, you just have to shut the bathroom door. The toilet, too, yeah. <laughs> Who there is, is this person that thinks I have door. a bathroom door? <laughs> um, well, do you, got, do you got one? You got some good ones last night. Do you got one story you think would well, work yeah. with both these scamps Listen, before we just guys, if, if comedy door. doesn't ever come back, you know what is back? Baseball. And yeah. um, there is a company hiring an MLB food tester to eat hot dogs at stadiums. The winner will be paid $500 and receive a budget for food and travel. Um, it's being done by a, the, a casino review site called Bonus Finder. I don't know what that has to do with baseball, but okay. Um, the winner will um, travel to the different stadiums to eat the hot dogs and watch the games. They'll be reviewing the hot dogs based on appearance and color, flavor, complexity, and quality of meat, bun quality, and flavor, sauce, and topping generosity, and value for money. They'll also have to review the games on entertainment and quality and stadium atmosphere and excitement. You guys can submit until May 6th. Second, the winner will be picked on May fifth. Uh, well, I I think I like this idea as long as whoever they pick is a flamboyant gay dude. Mm. Like I want the guy whoever's eating the hot dogs has to like be you know an MLB, but it has to be a flamboyant gay who knows baseball too. It has to be that type of character. Yeah. That, then I'll so watch Joe Buck. It. Otherwise, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want him to be able to put the whole hot dog in his mouth and then take it out, and it's still in perfect prime condition. <laughs> and he's, he's got to be, like, really excited when he goes to the Cubs game for ciabasta, you know, like for the big yeah. thing. It's for all the pull sausages, man. Either they're yeah, yeah. Wrigley or... Uh, <laughs> I want, I want to watch him pre-open all the little spicy mustard packets and just to mix a giant... Spicy mustard. I'm well, fucking this, starving. This right. is a good example of a story Joe just gets for herself because this is all she cares about when going to said baseball games is this. I know that this is just a gig you want. But that's the issue. If I were just reviewing the hot dogs, I would be golden. <laughs> but I also have to review the games on entertainment and quality. If I'm reviewing on entertainment, I'm going to be like, where's the kick line? I <laughs> uh, This isn't entertaining enough. I want some choreography. I want some fireworks. All of hey, that. Hey, JoJo. Yeah. JoJo, are you, are you uh, familiar with the term glizzies? I don't want to know. Are you, oh, are you a glizzy gobbler, JoJo? What does that mean? That? Clip it, guys. Clip it. <laughs> We're going to clip this part. A gl you know, do you like glizzies or not, JoJo? I'm assuming this involves something. I don't want to answer because this is going to turn into a sound bite, and Gino's going to want to isolate it and <laughs> yeah, use it. Try I'm trying to work my way back in, in hot water. I was, I was trying for you, Gino. A glizzy, a glizzy is, it, is a hot dog, but it could also be a penis. Oh. And it's what the kids call each other nowadays, a glizzy gobbler. Bill really? is a glizzy gobbler. I'm assuming that means my skin's really good as a result, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, I, I assume yeah, it's just, it's it's, it's got to be one of them TikTok uh, thing the bops. <gasps> well, listen, figs, on that real great high note, thank you for <laughs> giving me this new term. Uh, before we send you on your uh, merry way, uh, you got any plugs or promotions or prescription drugs for us, buddy boy? Yeah, man, uh, I just released my pilot episode on uh, the Real Ass Podcast. I took over. We, we filmed the pilot. Uh, it's on YouTube now. It's getting a lot of great feedback. The MF Podcast. Check it out. 
And uh, yeah, go back on TikTok and you can follow me, see me shake my ass on TikTok. I do and, like uh, shake it. Yeah, I missed you guys, and I'm gonna make it up to you. I'm gonna, I'll swing by soon. We nice look to forward to, to it, Glizzy the Gobbler, Thanks, or is it Glizzy Gobbler? Please, I don't guys. even remember. I already forgot. Thanks, buddy. Sash, I apologize for that horrific no. miss. I don't even know what that term meant. Yeah. Nor no, do I no, want to explore fine. it I, further, I, or do I? Uh, but I'll tell you, you know what the one I did enjoy, and I know he's gonna have some thoughts on this, uh, is the whole vibrator thing. That yeah. was a good one. Mm-hmm. The whole vibrator thing. All right, just the tip. But uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I was I was fascinated to see where you're going to go with this one, Sasha. I know what you're thinking. What does Dakota Johnson think about vibrators? Oh, I think. Well, um, she says we shouldn't call vibrators sex toys. Um, saying, I agree. For too long, <laughs> sexual health has been poorly marketed, hyper aggressive, and highly gendered. Um, she's a co-creator or co-creative director and investor for Maud, which is, I don't know, a company that does something with sexual wellness. Anyways, um, <laughs> well, we are promoting the brands. It. This is not a toy campaign, encouraging women to post photos of their vibrators on social media. She says often the use of language surrounding sexual products is antiquated, gender specific and belittling. Um, the founder, Ava, says vibrators and devices have been called toys, a connotation that trivializes their basic benefit yeah. to provide stimulation and imp- that improves sexual wellness and feelings of well-being. Now, in terms of the history of the vibrator, um, it dates back to the Victorian era when doctors treated female anxiety and depression, then known as hysteria, with genital stimulation via vibrating devices. Although, in 2018, two historians claimed there was no evidence for the wildly uh, popular popularized anecdote uh guess what scientists or historians i found evidence of vibrator usage during hysteria times let's take a look during hysteria times we are not going to take a dangerous electrical device and press it against a lady's most gentle areas Oh, are you hurt? No. Oh, right there. <laughs> what do you call that little thing? Well, I was calling it the feather duster. But I think it's something quick. So the girl knows what to ask for. There is a um, social revolution. This is oh. the film. Uh, it's called Hysteria, starring Ma- uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal. It's a very good movie. Um, but, Sasha, curious yeah. about how you feel about the term toy. I think that, I mean, can it be fun a little? Like, can't, why can't it be fun? Why can't we yeah. call? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for, by the way, I'm all for calling the female sex toys toys. But I agree with them that the male one, like a flashlight is just too sad to be called a toy. <laughs> anything, <laughs> yes. anything men use for, you know, that's just, you can't call that a toy. That is really a helpful device for sad men. Uh, but uh, everything women do, that's fun. And I think that, I, so I'm half and half with them. But also I think that um, I remember reading somewhere, and I don't know if this is, a, if this is BS, but I remember reading somewhere that um, they had a, vi- a vibrator type device they found in Cleopatra's whatever. To, there was, that she had like a hollowed out wooden thing that she would fill with bees. Yes. That is absolutely true. And then bees true. would like spin, up, and then that would like stimulate. So yeah. it, there's actually, yeah, even before electricity, there's actually like you know wow. proof of it. Uh, I don't know if they found like Caesar's flashlight. I don't think that was. <laughs> I think it was just a small boy. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. So, but uh, I, see, I agree that nobody should call those things toys. I think I think it's good to actually call them toys for two reasons. First of all, if a child in your home finds it, you can say, no, no, that's mommy's toy. Right, yeah. How else do you explain that? This is my sexual wellness device. No! <laughs> and then I also think sometimes some men can feel emasculated if a woman brings a vibrator 
into the bed with her partner. So maybe by saying it's a toy, it it trivializes it a little bit. It's sort of like, no, 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 your piece is the best, but <laughs> this is just a toy. It's just a fun thing to play with. So it, it um, the men who are insecure, maybe it doesn't, you know, right. add to that. 